Hello all, welcome back. I hope you're all well. It's a very wet day today. <laughs> it's been raining since uh, yesterday afternoon and it's not stopped since, well, other than right now, just as I've set up, so that's pretty good. I felt the need to put the tarp up anyway because we've got a few things to do here today. Um, this is something I wanted to do God, maybe two, three years ago. Let's talk about kind of survival foods and survival food history, I guess, as well as wild edibles and stuff. I've touched on bits here and there before you've seen me use certain things, but um, I wanted to go over a few seasonal and kind of other bits today because um, I was doing it anyway. <laughs> I was making myself some uh, fruit leather um, and some acorn coffee and stuff anyway, so I thought I might as well kind of integrate it into this video that I've been meaning to do for so long. So I'll get a few bits out over here under the tarp and uh, I'll talk you through them. So how do you like my presentation skills? Not bad, eh? <laughs> so as you can see here, I've brought out quite a variety of things. Um, we've got a mixture here uh, from the kind of, you know, prehistory to uh, pretty modern day history. Um, there's no real link here other than it's survival food um, and I just wanted to talk about it a bit. The reason I selected these is because I find them interesting. A few of them I've used in the past and do use regularly. A few techniques you'll find over and over again in survival foods is drying, pickling, canning, uh, salting and curing. These are the ways of preserving food and making them last longer, as well as eating seasonal fo foods and making use of them. Before a lot of techniques you'd have to save food for the winter or you wouldn't get like your uh, vitamin C for example. So I'm going to go through some of these in no particular order I don't think, there's, there's not a real structure here. <laughs> And uh, we'll start off with um, camp coffee. So as you can see, this is a pretty modern product, but it has been made for a very long time, since 1876. Um, the reason I picked this, you may get a hint from the little label there. It's very army focused. So this is concentrated coffee flavored syrup um, made with chicory extract, sugar, water, and some dried coffee extract. This is a precursor to instant coffee uh, made for the military. This was developed in Glasgow. And as you can see on the front there, we've got a, a Gordon Highlander sharing a cup of coffee with a British Indian soldier. Uh, it wasn't always this way. This has been kind of altered over the years to, to be a bit more modern. Um, the uh, Scottish soldier was being served the coffee by the Indian soldier at one point. So yeah, as I said, this is just an interesting thing because I didn't used to know about it until a bit more recently that it was developed for the uh, British forces and um, a way of taking coffee to the front or, or out to the colonies. These days it stays relevant, some people do drink it, but it's used um, in baking quite a lot because it's a syrup, it's sugary, and you get that extract in there. So it's just an interesting thing I wanted to mention because I only learned about it a couple of years ago myself. As we are on the packaged, more modern stuff, let's talk about Spam. Spam being a popular camping choice, um, something we still see in rations today, uh, a very popular food worldwide, and um, obviously tinned. This is a ham and pork mix from 1937, and it gained popularity throughout the world during World War II. And that's because of the American forces finding a way of getting uh, protein meat to the front. Um, as the American forces moved across the Pacific, as did the Spam, and that's how it became pretty much the national dish of Hawaii. You'll see it even in their McDonald's, I think, Hawaiian burgers and all sorts. When the American forces come over to Britain to help on the uh, Western Front, uh, they also brought their Spam, and it became a popular choice for rationing over here as well. Um, and then, you know, that's why it got its reputation in Monty Python, etc. Apparently, by 1959, I read this before coming out, Spam had sold one billion cans. So yeah, spread throughout the world. 
as we're talking about some more military focused foods let's talk about bovril uh, some of you people abroad might not have heard of bovril um, but it's basically a beef extract uh, this was developed by a scotsman living in canada uh, basically for the franco-prussian war napoleon wanted a million cans of beef fed to his troops on the front and um, because of England's colonies etc it's hard to get it there so they developed this at first it was called fluid beef later called beef extract it uh, becomes a staple of war foods in the first and second world war good way of getting protein to people you can uh, dissolve it and have it as a drink or put it into a stew or so, something like that in more recent times they tried to make it vegetarian by changing it from beef extract to yeast extract. Uh, this didn't go down too well with people who loved their bovril and they uh, developed a new recipe which is kind of a blend of the two basically. But this stuff is great, great in a stew etc. Love this stuff. Let's now get on to some of our kind of older techniques of preserving food. Right here and here we've got some dried products. Here we have beef jerky, which I absolutely love. Uh, this is a very old technique. Um, Native Americans used this technique um, going back to prehistory, basically. Uh, that's where it gets its name from the tribe. Sounds very much like jerky, but uh, I won't try and pronounce it. It's uh, lean cuts of meat cut into strips, salted and dried, or dehydrated, basically. Absolutely delicious. This gained popularity in, America, in the Americas with the uh, kind of frontiersmen and cowboys and things like that, uh, trappers. Uh, they would slaughter a lot of buffalo and make a lot of this for uh, taking on the trowel. This is going to take us over to pemmican. So this is pemmican. Um, some of you have been on the channel for a while may have seen me use this before. This particular piece is uh, maybe three years old. Uh, I'd have to check the video to actually know for sure, but it shows how much it uh, does stay in a good condition. Pemmican's a mixture of tallow fat. Uh, this is actually um, suet. It's dried meat and dried berries. So it's basically your jerky cut very small and um, your dried fruits as well in there as well. Very similar to a fat ball that you would uh, feed birds in the winter. The fur traders and trappers would use this as well. Um, so you'd get your fat from your buffalo and your meat from your buffalo, um, any berries that are in season, and make a ton of this to take out with you. Later used in Arctic exploration, pioneers, all that sort of thing. And the way you would use this if you were desperate, you would just munch into it. It'll give you the fat and protein and everything you need. But um, if you had other things with you, uh, if you're a troop, for example, um, maybe you would forage or locals would give you food, whatever, you would make some kind of stew with it. Uh, maybe the military themselves would give you your, uh, your pound of, of meat for the week or some beans or something. And yeah, you would uh, make some kind of stew out of that using that as the base, some water and some whatever else you can get hold of. And uh, that is pemmican. Back over here. Similar to our jerky, we've got fruit leather. Um, you could always call this fruit jerky or something as well. Uh, every culture around the world has their way of doing something like this. This particular one I did the other week, it is um, hawthorn berries and blackberries. And um, while I was making this, <laughs> anyway, this is why I thought I may as well do this video. Mm, nice and sweet, a little bit bitter, lovely. This you could just eat like this, preserved it last a year more, or you could put it in like a stew with other ingredients. Just munch on the trowel, it's a way of getting certain vitamins um, out of season, preserving that fruit while you've got it. This is basically just mashed up fruit, uh, filtered if you can, but you don't have to, and um, just spread out thin and dried out. You can just air dry it. Underneath here we have some rose hips. So like I was saying, while your uh, fruits are in season, your rose hips are out right now. Um, good source of vitamin C, more than uh, citrus fruits, I believe. And you can make teas and drinks and things, even jams and stuff out of this. Uh, if you break them open, probably won't be able to here. I haven't got a knife handy. It's very fibrous inside, so you do need to process it. 
you do need to process them, but um, yeah, quite delicious when you do. A bit of rose hip tea. Something else in shot here in season. I'll uh, carefully try and open it. We've got ourselves some chestnuts, sweet chestnuts. These are quite small ones to be honest. Um, shelled, cooked, absolutely delicious. And again, you know, these are in season right now um, and uh, it's a free food and you can shell them and put them in your stew, which uh, people would do back then. Just put everything you can in a, in a stew. Just out of shot here, you probably saw these. These are called hard tack or ship's biscuits. Um, you've probably heard of them. They are, mm, oh dear, I made these a couple of days ago. Very hard indeed, like a cracker. Uh, you'll find these still in military rations today, basically. It's um, flour, salt and water. Very basic, either very slowly baked or baked twice to get all the moisture out. And that will make it last months, if not years. Um, called ship biscuits because used by navies the worldwide for years and years, 17th to 19th century and like I say into modern day in some ration packs basically. Um, popularised by being called a ship biscuit but you know traces of these could be found back to kind of Roman days basically. Down here slightly out of shot, this uh, powder here is acorn coffee. Um, you could call it acorn flour, it's probably a bit too baked to be used that way. Uh, it's got a bit of colour on it. Acorns you've probably heard are not edible. Here's one here, Ooh, looks like squirrel's got to that one from the oak tree. Um, we're under one right now. They do need a lot of processing. They need the tannins in them leached out of them. Like foods worldwide, um, primitive cultures learn how to deal with these tannins. Um, you can soak them in a stream for a week, you can boil them over and over. Um, the white oak is best, I believe, has the least amount of tannins in its acorns, least amount of processing. Um, but yeah, leaching in a stream is the easier way of doing that because it doesn't use fuel, it doesn't use effort. Um, and yeah, we'll be ready after a week, 10 days, something like that. You can um, dry them out, grind them down, use it as a flour to make breads. Or, as I'm probably going to do, is use this as a coffee. I probably could have roasted it a bit more, to be honest. But, uh, yeah. Absolutely delicious. Sweet, nutty kind of coffee. Just over here, in this pot, you can see these weird substances. Absolutely very fragrant. Uh, this is portable soup, sometimes called pocket soup or veal glue. Um, closely related to kind of bouillons and things like that. Um, you take your, your beef bones, um, boil them and boil them until you've got uh, a nice beef stock. You reduce that down as much as you possibly can, pour it out into a gloopy substance. Um, when it cools it will solidify a bit and then over a few days you will uh, start to dry it. This one could do with a bit more drying, but it will do naturally. It, uh, when it's ready, it will usually hold its shape, but it's leathery, um, very fragrant. You will dissolve this into hot water as a base for a stew. So it's like a precursor to something like the Bovril. This is something popular in the 18th and 19th century. Um, I hadn't heard of this myself till I saw Townsend's and Sons, the YouTube channel, making it. Uh, I made some myself, uh, same time I made my pen and pemmican actually, and yeah, uh, I used ox towels, uh, like I said, just boil them down, take out the meat, eat that, and uh, make your portable soup. Like I said, other things you might find um, if you're a, a soldier um, in the 18th century, or a pioneer, a trapper, um, you would pick anything you can that's wild, you would um, get given things maybe by people supporting troops, uh, you would steal, rob, um, forage, whatever you could get your hands on. So you might get, say, some, some beans or a potato or something. Um, we've got these uh, dried beans here, that's something that'd be issued to uh, troops back then as well. So you'd soak these and then put them in your stew. Um, you'd get very little food and you'd have to uh, stretch it out and that's why you know, a lot of foraging and begging and stealing would happen back then as well. So I think I've covered everything I kind of wanted to here. We've got uh, sort of seasonal things and how important that is. Um, we've got ancient prehistory techniques of preserving food. 
and how that lives on today. We've got ways of making inedible foods edible and more modern things like your uh, Spam and your Bovril and your, your Camp Coffee which are kind of developed for military purposes. Um, that covers a lot of things, just things I found interesting and kind of different techniques for, for making survival food. What I'll do now, something I've not really ever done before, I'm going to cook up a survival stew, I'm going to call it, using some of these things. I think I'm going to avoid the more modern ingredients and go for the more traditional ones. Sounds like the rain is about to come back down, so <laughs> I'd better get going with making a fire. Right, I've been to the wood store. It's nice having a nice dry wood store on a day like this. It's so dark today, I think it's going to rain any minute. So yeah, got a few bits of kindling, some logs, and we'll uh, get this going. Let's get a nice base to our fire. Something to create some coals. And ordinarily you might be using, say, flint and steel to uh, create your spark. I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm going to be using a lighter and some of this wood wool. <laughs> it's soaked out here and fire lighting is not the uh, idea of the uh, video today. So I'm just going to set this going. And start getting on our kindling. I think this is what I've chosen to use. Some of them beans that are soaked, some sweet chestnuts, some of that fruit leather, the jerky is my meat, the portable soup, that's going to be the base for the stew. I'm going to use not all of the pemmican, but some of it, a nice bit of fat, and it's going to be thickened using these ship biscuits broken up. So I think that's something that um, is quite genuine. I may add the potato or uh, the beans, um, I may have a look, see if we've still got some nettles around. Um, that's going to add some iron. And uh, yeah, we'll get that going as soon as this fire takes properly. Even this from the wood store, you can see all the uh, smoke coming off. It's wet around here. Now one thing I did forget to mention actually, it being autumn, seasonal foods, is uh, mushrooms. I don't have the foggiest what these are to be quite honest. <laughs> um, there's only a few that I am comfortable identifying, your morels, your puffballs, um, chicken of the woods, oysters, that sort of thing. A uh, few edibles, but um, yeah, even I get a bit nervous with them. You don't get a huge amount of nutrition. They are tasty, but uh, if you're unsure, don't go there, it's, it's dangerous. So there we go, our chestnuts, our beans that have been soaked, our jerky and fruit jerky. I'm putting in the green beans because I've got them with me. Um, I might start with one of them, two is quite a lot. It's a whole oxtail there and I'll uh, Oh, I've definitely made hardtack well. <laughs> this will uh, soak and uh, thicken it up. I've also just foraged a few nettles. Not the best time of year for them, but a bit of iron. Not very potent at the moment either, so quite easy to pick by hand. Get some water in there. Get that lid on. We'll get that over the fire. And 
and we'll cook that, I'm going to guess, an hour-ish. I can hear that we've achieved a boil, so I'm going to take this off for a minute. And give her a bit of a stir. You can see how it's taking on that colour from that pull to pull soup. That actually looks pretty nice. <laughs> There's quite a lot of ingredients there. Our beans, our green beans that I added in, our nettles, our seasonal nuts, basically beef stock and um, rehydrating that jerky and hopefully when these ship's biscuits start to break down more it'll thicken up nicely. Alright, like I said, I didn't really roast this enough. I was a little bit rushed, so if I try out this as a, an acorn coffee, acorn tea, whatever you want to call it. Because the last time I had it, some time ago, look, nice colour. Um, I absolutely loved it. Might need a bit more in, we'll see. I've uh, not myself actually baked with it as of yet, just used it as a drink, but uh, I'll get around to that, I'm sure. It's um, quite a lot you need to uh, actually gather to um, get enough to properly bake like a bread with. Cheers. Oh, well that definitely needs more. I just need some time to infuse there. Mm, that's better. Really nice. Sweet and nutty. It's, it's hard to describe really. It's similar to a sweet chestnut, I guess. If you don't get them tannins out, you're going to be windy though. <laughs> we are certainly moving along here. Them ship's biscuits, that's how tough they are. They're still not broken down yet. That's kind of the main thing I'm waiting for now. Got our bits of fruit leather kind of rehydrating. Actually, the uh, jerky looks nicely rehydrated. Beans looking good. Yeah, so just wait for them ship biscuits to thicken that up a bit and we'll uh, tuck in because I'm hungry. I'm actually really looking forward to this. Doesn't that look good? So it's thickened up, as you can see, like a nice thick gravy there. And um, we've still got some of our ship's biscuits, kind of like croutons. They're soft. Oh, we've got to try this. I'm really impressed with how the jerky seems to have rehydrated. let's just go over that again. We've got our base made from our portable soup. We've got chestnuts in season. We've got the fruit leather in there. Um, I think it's dissolved a bit but there's some bits still. Um, I made that this week. We've got our ship's biscuits, our jerky, our beans that were soaked, uh, some uh, nettles just at the end of their life really and our green beans which, uh, well, they were foraged or traded. <laughs> um, what else was there? Oh, our pemmican base as well. So that's going to give us some fat. All right, let's uh, give this a go. Try and get a little bit of a few things here. Some of that gravy. I do love chestnuts. <laughs> Right, I'm going to try and get a piece of meat and ship biscuit there. 
a little bit of that gravy. I'll tell you what, as well as thickening the sauce, the um, ship's biscuits taste like um, dumplings. They've softened up but they've still got some body to them. Brilliant. Like beans and uh, some nettle there as well. This is a meal that would absolutely keep you going. It's maybe a little more extravagant, you'd probably only have a couple of these ingredients in the situations we were going over earlier, but you know, best case scenario. Without obviously some uh, fresh meat that maybe you've hunted or you was given as a part of your rationing. We've got fats from our pemmican, good fats from our chestnuts. We've got our carbohydrates from our ship's biscuits, protein in our jerky, we've got vitamins in our, our dried fruit. Mm. This is the first meal I've had today and it's uh, past midday so I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to be completely honest with you, I didn't see myself eating all of that. I thought I'd do a, a little taste on camera. But I'm hungry and to be honest I think I've had worse stews. Like served to me. <laughs> Very nice. So yeah, I'm no expert but I hope you found that interesting. There's a few of the things that interest me. Excuse me. <laughs> and they're kind of fun little projects to do. You can go out, do a bit of foraging and bring it home and kind of process it. I'll probably interject some of the pictures of me doing it at home into this video so you can get an idea of how it's done. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that one. Um, it's a video I've wanted to do for a long time. I know it won't be a popular one, but I wanted to do it. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now. See you next time.